Hi, and welcome to The Bright Balloon, a podcast where I'm sharing bright ideas for your balloon business. My name is Sarah Meyer, and I'm a balloon business owner like you, and I love the creative side of what I do, but I really love the business side, which seems to be the part where most people struggle. So I'm here to help. Each week, I'm bringing you an episode full of bite-sized tips you can use to make improvements in your business. I want you to make more money, eliminate stress, and learn along with me as we grow our creative businesses together. Welcome to The Bright Balloon, presented by 17 Hats. Hello and welcome to another episode. Today I'm chatting with my good friend Jenny Porter who owns Three Sparrows Balloon Studio in Canada and she has a really interesting business model that I wanted to hear more about which is why she's on the show. So instead of being a balloon business owner and then bringing on employees which most of us do she decided from the beginning to bring on a business partner. So instead of being the sole owner and having a bunch of people working under her Jenny instead chose to have an equal split with her business partner Mel and they each do different things and they support each other and they do it equally which I think is really interesting and I wanted to hear more about. Um, Jenny is one of the most talented people I know not only as a balloon decorator but now as a designer. She has really stepped into this designer role and she has been one of the designers on the team since the very beginning of my big balloon build that I'll be hosting in Lake Geneva at the end of March. So if you see photos online, Jenny is responsible for a lot of that design work and she has really, really um, started honing her skills, not only conceptually as a designer, but the nitty gritty of how to make recipes and how to convert these big uh entire you know gyms full of balloons how to make that an easy step-by-step process so that teams of 75 people can each be working on something at a different time now we're not going to get too into the details of the big balloon build in this episode you will hear us chat about it but she and I already have plans to do another episode more about that design process but all of that to say when you see the incredible photos from the big balloon build if you're not coming in person a lot of that work started with Jenny. So I am so grateful for her to come on the podcast and tell us about her really unique business model. And um, it's just, it was so fun chatting with my friend. And I think you'll be able to hear that in the interview. So let's get into it. All right, welcome to this episode. I'm so excited to have my friend Jenny Porter here chatting about your business model. You work with a business partner and you really enjoy it. The only things I've ever heard about a business partner is like, terrible stories of how (laughs) everything went wrong. So that's why I wanted to chat with you because I don't think that is always the case. So I'm really excited to hear about your business. But before we get into that, give us the intro. Where are you from? What do you do? And what is your company? I feel it's like the uh, elevator speech. Yeah, exactly. Um, So I am from Oshawa, Ontario, Canada, which is like a couple hours from Toronto to give people like some perspective. Um, I've been doing balloons for, I think I'm on my seventh year, um, which is actually a fair amount of time. Uh, But it started, I used to own a furniture store and we wanted to add some helium like balloons to our store and you couldn't buy helium anywhere that was close. So you had to drive 40 minutes if you wanted to get helium. And I was like, this is crazy. Let's just get a helium tank. But I didn't realize that balloons were more than balloons on a string. Interesting. Until that moment where I started Googling and then we ended up going um, to Tennessee and doing some training there. And that was an eye opener. And then I was like, I'm going to do this. Like, I'm going to learn all about this. And I went to Joette's bit like the, I think it was like the first summit in Florida. Okay. And then I just have never, I've never left that summit. And it's all been just this big whirlwind of like learning, gaining knowledge and COVID. And I don't know, it's it's been a lot, but it's been great. Um, And then last, I think it's last year, it could be the year before I, I took on a business partner because my business grew enough that I no longer won. I don't want to do it by myself. Um, and two, I needed, I needed help. So, um, a good friend of mine, yeah, Melanie, uh, we work together. I'm a nurse. 
I'll, I feel like I'm just adding like side pieces in. I'm a nurse. No, uh, I feel like all of us are are a lot of different things. So yeah, like relevant. a little piece of everything. So we, I worked in the Emerge with Mel for God knows how long. Um, and we always used to like talk about crafts because we're both that type of person. And one day she bought um, a glow forge. I'm not sure you know what that is, but it's yeah. uh, it's like a they, it cuts acrylic and all these things. And I was like, oh, that's really good. We could add some party decor. Like I, I should team up with you. And she's like, oh, I'd love to learn balloons. And then one day we just sat down and we're like, I was like, let's just do this. She's like, she's like, you're going to go 50, 50 with me. And I don't know anything about balloons. I was like, yeah, let's do it. So why, did, why did you do that though? Because why didn't you just hire an employee? I don't know. I think that uh, I wanted a partner. I wanted to have someone to like chat with the things that I'm not good in, in business is, and it just sounds terrible, but I'm not good with uh, money. I'm not good with the like banking portions. I don't love confrontation. Um, so when you get those kind of difficult clients, yeah. those are the moments where I'm like, Hey Mel, like I've had these like long conversations with this person and I no longer really want to talk to them. <laughs> can, you, can you help me and call them? Cause I'm at a point where I, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. Um, and it's nice to be able to call someone and say, Hey, like we have this big gig on Saturday. Um, these are the things we got to do. And on the backside, she's doing party decor. So like she's taking like custom orders and all this stuff that at some point I'd love to learn how to do. Um, but I don't know yet. And we're doing this like, like side revenue, I guess. Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, when COVID hit, we didn't know where we were going to go with balloons and if it was going to plummet or if it was going to skyrocket. And we were just lucky it skyrocketed um, because everybody had a party. Yeah. But now this year, and I'm not sure if you felt it last year too, but it, it was this weird area where people weren't really buying a lot of things. Like maybe they're saving their money more because the economy was changing. Um and that's where we've picked up the slack with like party decor. And, yeah, and I feel like, like maybe um, you got that a little earlier in Canada, but I feel like that's happening now. I feel like people are still buying, but they're a little bit more considerate. Um, Absolutely. Even I've heard it from like my friends that are balloon people. Like we want to buy this product, but we're like, mm, like right now it's a little tight. Like the cash flow is a little tight. So I feel yeah. like everywhere people have slowed down on their spending. But I do think Canada, you got you got hit early because isn't the exchange rate or I don't even know that. Our, it's like, yeah. Like it, it feels like sometimes like when you're putting out $500, like something costs $500 American and then it cost me $800. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, Whoa, like, there goes everything. Yeah. <laughs> there goes all my money. That's why I don't buy balloons from the States. Like I buy them at, from where I'm here. I would love to buy from the great companies you guys have out there. You have more product, but the duty, the exchange would kill me. Yeah. Yeah. So your company, you are three sparrows. I personally am three sparrows balloons, but together Mel and I are, I guess our corporation company name is called the FET studio. Okay. Uh, FET is party. So Mel's uh, French. She's from Quebec. Okay. She's like uh, like full fledged French Canadian. Um, so we wanted to have that mix in there. So like when people send a check, they send it to the FET studio. Okay. And then like, it's like a subdivision is three sparrows. And the reasoning is, is that I have such a good following now to just quit that name and just be something else. I, f I felt worried that I would lose that momentum I built. Yeah, that's interesting. So it's kind of like that's your umbrella and yeah. then you can have your different areas underneath it. That's actually how I operate too. Um, my LLC is event professionals because like, I don't know. I used to do face painting. Now I do balloons. I'm yeah. kidding myself if I don't think something is coming next. Like I just, there's always something next. So at 100%. least it's kind of all covered. Sometimes yeah. I think your LLC is so specific that it doesn't give you any room to. Well, that's around. it. And, and the government doesn't seem upset by it. So we're just going to keep rolling. I know it's a bit confusing to people, but um, at the end of the day, they're still getting the same great product. And I have an opportunity to try to like upsell people with, like, hey, like, are you having a cake? Like, we make cake toppers. Yeah. Like, we do stir sticks. Like, people are just like, oh, you do? I'm like, so oh, yeah, of course. Is that all Mel? Like, is that how things kind of have broken down? Like, you're all balloons and she's the other crafty thing? Yeah, so I'd say, like, I'm I'm 100% balloons. Plus, I'll, I'll help out with anything that, like, delivering and stuff like that for her stuff. 
um, and she's more 50, 50. So she's doing, because the Glowforge stuff has, she's only a year in, like you can't expect grand things in one year in your business. So by the time we hit a five year mark, she should be where I am now. And we should be able to do that thing. Like that's my thought anyways. And I have always believed that five years is kind of a good benchmark. If you're not doing really well in your business at the five year mark, maybe it's time to switch. Yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think there's, you have to put time in. I don't think you can take a year and be like, how come we didn't make thousands upon thousands of dollars? Well, we have 800 followers on the FET studio. Um, there's 150,000 people in my city. Yeah. So, like, it's a fraction of the amount of people. So, um, yeah, we'll get there. And I think that's the key, right? Like, you have to be positive. You have to believe that something is going to get better. Um, and when it comes to partnership, you have to believe in the person you're partnering with, right? Um, we're pretty open. Like, she's pretty sassy. Um, French people are pretty sassy. So, like, we get along quite well. Um, I don't have a problem <laughs> through text message being like, hey, like, what's happening with this? If I'm upset, like, I'm not a big, I hate confrontation. I don't do it in person. I get it's just too hard for me. I don't yeah. know. Um, but she's very receptive, right? So we have a really, and I think that's nursing too. Like you have the ability to be that way, but, um, you know, we get along really well. We, it's easy to work with. We have a good time. Like, and then we, we went to Bloom Wonderland was that last year. Yeah. And so we stayed together in a room, like, and I think if you can stay in a room with a friend for a week, you can do anything. Well, and I think that's why I was, that's why we actually started talking after that about potentially doing an episode because I guess I thought you were more separate. So when I saw Mal at Balloon Wonderland, that was the first time I was like, wait, she like does the balloons too? I kind of wasn't sure yeah. of what your setup is. So that's cool that she, that she was able to come and, and yeah, yes. that huge event. Yeah. So I, well, I like to say I taught her all she knows, <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, I trained her the way that I want my portion of the business to be run um, and how I like things done. And now she just does that, but she does it kind of um, the basics exactly how we want it. And then with her own flair. So there's always room to get better. And I'm that type of person too. Like if, if you have a suggestion and it's better than my suggestion, I'd be the first person to say like, Oh yeah, <laughs> let's do it your way. Yeah. I'm not hard and fast on whatever I say goes. Um, there's a better way and it costs less money and, Let's do it. Um, but at the same time, I want to have fun. Like, yeah, I want to laugh hard till we cry, which we do all the time. And I just want to have a good time. Like, that's the point of this business. The point of balloons is to bring joy, celebrate, laugh, um, you know, provide some sort of purpose in your life that makes you happy. Right? Yeah. And I think, too, I don't think people talk about the fact that it is kind of lonely business. Like it is lonely to be by yourself yeah. working full time. I actually, by the time this episode comes out, I will have announced that I've left my job. Um, and that was one of my fears. Like I yeah. go into an office and I see people and even if they're not like my best friends, there's like that workplace banter and like you can complain together or when stuff mm -hmm. is fun. It's fun. When stuff is terrible, it's fun to complain about. Like that was one of my concerns. It still is one of my concerns that now I'm just going to be working from home by myself. Also you do all weekend events. So like, it's hard to just socialize like a normal person. So I think that's cool that you have built in support and camaraderie. Yeah. Um, cause I don't think a lot of people do. I think it can be kind of isolating. Yeah. I think at, at the end of the day, I think people worry about money, right? Like I can remember when I told someone I was partnering with Mel, they were like, yeah, but you're the one with all the knowledge. You're giving up 50% for your knowledge. I was like, yeah, but at the same time, like I'm going to have more fun and it's going to bring me more joy. And like, what, like what's money when you're enjoying life? Like, I don't know. I'm not really, maybe that's why I don't take care of the books, but, um, I'm just not that way. Like I, I want to make enough money to live, but I don't need to be rolling in money. Yeah. I, you know, I totally agree with that. And I feel like since resigning from my job, I'm like 
almost hustling more than I need to. It's almost like I'm starting to panic and I'm trying to like really ramp up sales and really do this and hire all these people. And then I kind of need to take a beat and just be like, well, what I was making before was fine. So yeah. like if I just match those sales numbers, it's that's okay. Like I don't need to now triple my revenue yeah. just because I left my full-time job. I'm very much in the same boat as you where it's like, I want to pay my bills put some money in savings and like, that's it. I don't need to have all the money in the world. I totally like work my life around like how many marquees do I need to sell to buy that? I love that. Right? Like I'm like, okay, I want to take the kids to Great Wolf Lodge. That costs $700. That's seven of these marquees. Yeah. Like, when you think of it like that, you're just like seven. <laughs> yeah. I can pull out seven. Let's do this. I know. I feel like people just pull sales goals kind of like out of thin air. And if you reverse engineer and you're like, okay, well, like literally I need like, let's say $3,000 to pay my bill. Yep. That makes everything feel a lot more manageable. You know, you're like, oh, maybe you're going to hit that in the first two weeks of the month and then actually take some time off on the second half of the month. Like, otherwise I feel like if we're waiting for like vacations to just be like built into our schedule it just never happens like every Saturday is going to eventually fill up yeah and I like the great thing is, is in the summer Mel and I take every other weekend so like if there's a, unless there's a big event yeah if there's some big event there needs two people there then like we'll both sort it out but um she likes to travel to go to her parents house um which are there in Quebec and like like this year I'm I'm away for like three weeks in a row in July like how do you just take three weeks off your business and be like, peace guys. Like, yeah, right. Good luck, customers. So she'll take care of that. And then she'll take August. And then and like, even, I know that I can get I that too, because even, um, even people with big teams, I have seen them on vacation and they're not on vacation. Like they are always on their phones. They're answering questions. I have been at a convention and like, I've seen someone fire an employee over the phone because something went so bad at home. And I'm like, that's my worst nightmare trying yeah. to take a vacation and also having to manage a team that's not working well. So I think with a partner, that's interesting because like the problems are as much hers as they are yours. And the solutions are as much hers yeah. as yours, you know? And we have the same process, right? So like we both do organic the exact same way every single time. So I don't need to worry ever about her going to do a job. Yeah. I know exactly what it's going to look like. Um, and I, I think too, something we kind of glazed over, but I think is really important is you basically hired the person you weren't, you didn't yeah. do like a job listing and look for this person. Like you knew who it was going to be. And then you've yeah. built a business kind of around her. So that's very much how my hiring mentality is too. It's like you find the person that's going to fit and that's who you pick. You don't like try to just fill a job description. Yeah. Like we were acquaintances prior to this. It's not like we hung out every day or. But um, we had similar interests and like our kids are close enough in age. And um, so I have a, I have a detached garage on my house. That's where we do our, our work from. And on the top level, there's a loft. So we've made it so that like, it's like a kid zone. So her kids are a bit younger. So there's lots of toys and stuff. So she has to come to the house to do X, Y, and Z. She doesn't have to leave her kids or have someone look after them. Literally bring the whole crew here. They go do their thing. There's a fridge up there and like, they're so close to her. And if they really want to come down and see her, they just slip down the slide. And... I know you have a slide. Yeah. <laughs> and they'll just see her right there. Right. So then you, there's that comfort of family too. And I think that's really important because how often can you take your kids to work? Um, never. Yeah. I love that. Let's actually, let's put a pin in that. Let's take a quick break and hear from a sponsor, but I do want to ask you more about your day-to-day -day setup. Um, I guess I was under the assumption you had like a retail shop, but you don't. So I want to hear about like how you actually sell things and what that looks like. So we will take a break and be right back. Hey friends, if you are having a slower winter season, now is the perfect time to get ahead on some of those tasks that you'll need completed when the spring and summer months hit. The thing that I love to do right now is make a big batch of 
bases. I make my own bases using a concrete paver and a special flange that I order from Having a Party Wholesale. I even did a teachable moment over on their Instagram page where I show exactly how I make my own bases. The great news is they're super easy to make and they're cheap enough that if you break or lose one, it's really not a big deal. So if you want to get ahead on a big batch of base plates, I will link to that tutorial in the show notes and I will link to that special flange that you can order from our sponsors having a party wholesale and don't forget at checkout you can even save five percent by using the code bright balloon all right welcome back let's revisit your your garage i thought you were in a rental space but you said you you build everything in your detached garage yeah. mel comes over works there when she needs to so you are just selling basically online yeah so i do um through Instagram and through Facebook, I have a, I have a website. It's a little bit weak, but, um, and then through 17 hats, literally I work through that job form. Yeah. Everything. Interesting. Okay. Let's take a sidebar. Cause I love 17 hats. Obviously they just sponsored the podcast, which is really exciting, but that is a great workaround. Like if you don't have a website, I always say like, you can't run your business on Instagram. But what I mean is like, you can't keep track of everything through instant messages, DMs, like you're going to get messed up. But a a quick loophole that you just mentioned is like, instead of sending people to your website, you can send them directly to your inquiry form. It's like a freestanding one page info form, like a Google doc almost, but it sends them into your CRM. So you live in 17 hats and all your communication after you get them off Instagram is on there. Yeah. So my Instagram has like an automatic reply that says, Hey, like we're not taking DMs. Uh, here's our job form, fill that out. And then we'll email you. That's and awesome. then literally once I get that job form, I'll email them my pricing guide. I don't email them 17 ads says cause it's automated. Yeah. And then that next interaction, they're actually interacting with me. Um, once they have decided if they're going to move forward, because I think that that point between Instagram, I really like what you have here. I'm going to fill out your job form. I get your pricing. Ooh, your pricing's too much ghosted or, I'm going to reply to you. So I don't have to deal with any of that. Yeah. That's already done for me. So that saves me eons of time. Yeah. Um, So I I think going through a process like that, like I have the form on my, on my, my website, but I also have everything like it's, it's everywhere. It's in my link tree. It's, it's literally in plain sight because I, not that I don't want to talk to people, but I don't want to have those initial conversations with people. I agree. And I, I think want to know their budget. Like, like as a consumer, I don't want to be embarrassed and have a conversation with someone and have no idea that they're like 10 times out of my price league. Like I, I like getting that information before I have to talk to someone. Um, mm-hmm. But I think we're really similar in that respect. I'm like, give me some info before I call yeah. you. I don't want to waste your time and you don't want to waste your time. Yeah. And I'm similar to you in the fact that like, so they'll say that they want a unicorn party. Like I don't send them pictures of unicorn foils. I say, great. Do you have a preference of colors? Great. And, then, and then they'll say like, Oh, pink. And I was, and then I'm like, okay, yeah, great. And I just write down the colors and then I match it to whatever I think works. Cause at the end of the day, like the foil may not match the cut. Like I do the best I can. And I honestly have never had anybody complain. So yeah. Um, when you spend too much time at letting somebody micromanage your business, then Frank, like you could spend eons talking to someone. They'll never be happy. Yeah, I know. So, I, I feel like the more I talk to you, I'm realizing we are very similar. Like I'm all about like, let's make it easy for me and for you. Like this is yeah. not, this is not something we need to talk about for three yeah. hours, but there are people out there that love that stuff. I am just not one of them. <laughs> no. And I, Like, I think it's great if you want to send me a picture of like your inspiration and I have that foil that's in your inspiration, like, let's do it. Um, I, I kind of have loads of stuff. Like I feel like I've been stockpiling things forever. Um, but like our setup's pretty easy, like inside the garage, it's, uh, we have the same like kind of bucket system as you have where you have your 11 inch and then I just jam a five inch bag into it so I can carry it on the go. And then all my 16 inch are in like long containers and that's it for balloons. Foils are like, I've, I've broken it down to like summertime, like yeah. sports, like super, like, it's not like 
Peppa Pig, uh, like it'll just say kids' birthdays. Me too. Um, I and then I just stack that in the side. So, and we have two workspaces. So if we're both working in there at the same time, that we can have two machines running. Um, but most of the time I'm in there, like I'm in there by myself doing my thing. Like I have a TV, I watch movies while I do my stuff. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty comfortable environment. I think that's, what's really important about having a really comfortable workspace. Cause you actually want to go there. Yeah. Like it's generally pretty clean. Like there's every once in a while, it looks like a, a bomb, but it's a quick clean, like, and it's, it's enjoyable. I like being able, I feel like I'm leaving home. Yeah. But I'm not because I can't go into the bathroom there because there's no bathroom. So I have to come home. Huh. To go to the bathroom. But at the end of the day, like when I say I'm going to work, I'm not in my house working where everybody can bother me. I'm walking out the door and I'm in the garage working. So, so how do you and Mel, like, how do you divvy that up? How does she know when to come? How do you know, like when you need all hands on deck, like who manages the product, like the actual projects? Like what does I do. that actually look yeah, like? Yeah, I do. Cause on 17 hats, the calendar makes it pretty simple to see like what you have going on. So like every Monday I take a look at the week in review. So if at any point I think that there's something that's not manageable in my books, then I will just say, Hey, like, look, can you come over Thursday? We got a big job. I don't think I can do it all myself and get all of it done. Um, I, I actually really love doing balloons. So I don't actually mind doing a fair amount of the work. And if she just shows up on the day of to help me install it, I'm super happy. Yeah. Um, that, like it may not, I know people will do like, I don't know what's the word, like tit for tat. Like you did this and I did this and you did that. And I did that. I, I honestly believe at the end of the day, it'll work out in the wash. Yeah. Like, because I, what if I, well, I'm going to your build. So that's a whole week. I literally just emailed and said, Hey, like I'm gone for a whole week this week. It's on you. Yeah. Um, like sh she'll figure it out. Like we have a pretty easy relationship that way where we can be like that. And I, and I want to do this job. It, I, it brings my life purpose. Like, and I've learned that a lot. I know we're only into February, but, um, like I just, I just feel really happy about where my life is and, and what I'm doing and um, the steps I'm taking to get to the goals that are my goals, um, which I've never had with like a job. Like I've yeah. never really cared enough about a job to be like, I want to be in management. Like I was like, no, like I want to go to work at the right time and come home on time. Like, yes. I don't want to do anything else but that. And that's not how I wanted to live. I, I realized that the hard way, I think a couple of years ago where I, I dreaded going to work Yeah, a few days in advance. I'd be like panicking about having to walk through the hospital doors. And, yeah. And yeah. Do that. Like, and I think COVID was a big part of it, but um, I, I didn't want, I don't want to live like that. I knew that it was giving me a lot of money. Like you get paid very well as a nurse, but I didn't need that money to live. So do I need an extra pair of Lululemon pants? No, like, yeah. I have a ton of them. So <laughs> let's just wear the ones I have, right? Like, So are you and Mel, are either of you still working as a nurse? Yeah, so Mel is still working uh, part-time as a nurse. So she works uh, like a couple shifts a week. She works part-time. I want to keep my license. Like I worked really hard to become a nurse. So that was four years of my life that like I'll never get back. So I, I want to keep the license. So I do like booster shots for kids twice a year. It's super simple. It's like four hours twice a week or something. But our, our like nursing body says that's enough. Yeah. And until I decide like, and until the nut, like I'm like, yeah, like I'm forever going to be this, then maybe I'll give it up. But yeah, um, I literally could travel anywhere and be a nurse. Yeah. So why not? Why do it? There's lots Those of travel nurses jobs. make a ton of money. Yeah. So like, I just, I do really, I found my niche in balloons. I've done a lot of entrepreneur stuff in the past, like lots where I thought like I was going to be a t-shirt maker at one point. Like, I, Oh my gosh, you should be. I'm throwing you <laughs> under the bus right now in a good way. Jenny sent me the cutest shirt, look, the cutest everything. You sent me all of this like handmade stuff. You, you should start selling that stuff. It's so cute. It's a... Uh, 
we used to own this like big, huge industrial machine. It was in our basement and I was making t-shirts. <laughs> oh my God. It was, it was crazy, really. And then we bought a furniture store and I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to own a furniture store and I'm going to sell furniture. Like, this is going to be great. Like, that's the like, most I feel like stuff. that's everybody. So like, I, I was a face painter. That's how I got into balloons. But before I was a face painter, I used to do like craft fairs and make like headbands with little jewels on them and then I did jewelry like I feel like that's so common like so many of us just do like yeah. all the things until we finally settle on something that like we like that actually makes money <laughs> yeah and you know what at the end of the day I think it's the people mm -hmm. I, if I was doing this and I'm just doing it with Mel and I'm communicating just with like the bloom people in my area it'd be pretty boring like and I'd probably quit but because I know that every year I get to go to like, I'm going to Florida, I'm going to Wisconsin, I'm going to Ohio, like I'm going to all these random places that I, I've never really traveled the state, so I've never really traveled. And I see all my friends there and I get to hang out and have a great time. And it's just this, it's a weird world full of people that have the same mindset yeah, and totally. are happy. Like if you've gone to a conference for something else, like I've been to a nursing conference, like whew, snore a thong, <laughs> like, like literally the most boring thing ever. No one wants to talk to each other. You go to a balloon conference and someone sees you that doesn't know you and they're like, so who are you? And you're like, oh, I'm so-and-so. Like, oh, hey, I'm so-and-so. Yeah. You just, you you find your people. I then... had this moment when I, okay, so I used to be face painting and I went to a teaching convention and it was four days about assessment. And I remember in the hotel, there was a face painting convention happening and I wasn't at that. I was at the assessment convention. And I remember just being like, I need to make some life changes because I want to die right now. Like, I just want to go to that face painting thing. And I'm sitting in this boardroom, like, how to grade. And I taught art. So it was like four hours on how to grade middle schoolers art. And I was like, this is the worst thing I've ever been to. Oh man. It's so true though. It's those eye-opening moments where you're just like, hmm, yeah. I need to make a change. Well, you, uh, you quit your job the week yeah. of the big balloon build. And I think that's when I knew you, we had been at things together, but that's where I felt like we really hit it off and clicked, but you just like left your position really yeah, close to the start I sent of an life. email from the big balloon I did too. Yeah, I sent an email. I was like, no, I don't think this is right for me. <laughs> I remember sitting in a booth. You're like, yeah, I just quit my job. I was like, wait, what? What do you do? And you're like, I'm a nurse. I was like, what? Oh man, so funny. So I, true. Though. I laughed harder at that meal than I did that entire week. That was the funniest. Oh man. That was so fun. It's uh, it's just, they're your people, right? So mm -hmm. you, and you talk to your people all the time. Like I, I chat with all the people that I hang out with at all these conferences. And every time you go to a new one, you pick up someone new. <laughs> like, I know, just, seriously. And it's weird how now you'll be like, we were at Balloon Boss Summit together for, I think like two years, but you're always running around and do, doing the photos. So like, you're not super available during the day. Yeah. So it really, it took that like third time we were together to finally have a meal yeah. together and like and get to know each other it was really it's funny because we always said well we should just sit down and chat uh, yeah it didn't ever happen yeah it's so it's just such a fun I, I, it's a fun life yeah I agree I'll, I'll put it but all right, let's take one last break. And then sure. I do want to ask you about money, even though you're not the money person. Yeah. But still in my brain, I'm like, so where does the money go and who gets it? So let's take a quick break and then chat about that when we get back. I bet you've listened to more than one Bright Balloon episode. And I bet you've heard my voice before a few times. My name is Jeff from Balloon Suite, and my team specializes in marketing your balloon decor business online. As you're growing your business, it can be hard to figure out where to put your time and treasure. It can be hard to figure out what exactly to do on your website to increase sales and increase leads. My team already knows exactly what to do to help your business move forward. Come on over to BalloonSuite.com, check out our plans and pricing. We would love to provide the website that helps you double the amount of revenue you're generating from your business. All right, so the nitty gritty. 
And I know you said you you don't really you're not in it for the money necessarily. You you're not super concerned. But like, what is the like the thousand foot view of how the money works? Like, where does it go when someone pays you? How do you guys pay each other? Like, what does a partnership look like in that sense? For us, it's uh, so we have one main bank account um, that where all the money goes whenever any like jobs come in or things like that. And then we each have our own credit card, like a business credit card. Um, we put parameters on what the expectations are, um, with using the credit card, uh, meaning like you can't just go to like Michael's and spend $600. Cause you think we might use that much ribbon, even though Mel will tell me that I use too much money for ribbon, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> But, uh, like when it comes to balloons, like we know that we'll spend, like we spend around a thousand dollars a month in balloons, um, for her supplies, we, we kind of, cause she doesn't do as much, um, quantity as I would say we do, like I do for balloons. Um, so she gets a smaller budget for like acrylic and wood, but when it comes to Christmas, I know we're going to, well, I say we. <laughs> I put that lightly. I don't do a lot for that, but she's going to make a ton of ornaments and stuff. Like, so I know that the budget needs to be higher for that. Um, so we work it out that way. And then if there's anything big, so if there's a big ticket item, either of us want, then we talk to each other about it. So I don't call her every time. I'm like, today I'm buying $150 of foils. Yeah. Is that okay? But it'd be like, I know that it's like okay. a new inflator or. Yeah. A new I tell her when thing. helium's coming up. Cause helium's a big expense. Yeah. Um, but most of the stuff, and then if there's, so we, we go on business lunches. Um, we always put that on our credit cards. Um, any type of trip, we put that on. Um, but when it comes to trips, because I go on most of the trips, I, I pay for that out of my pocket at this point because our business isn't big enough to pay for everything back. Um, but we do still write it off. Sure. So, but it goes towards my write-offs. So our accountant is very clear of how our business model works. Um, so when I send in my stuff, she knows that it's my write-off and not Mel's, okay. which is nice. Um, so then how do you get like a salary or a paycheck? What yeah. do you have a set amount? Every month what we do is we reassess the, so we pay our credit cards um, and then we assess how much money's left in the bank. So say there's like 10,000 left in the bank. We'll take 2,000 each. Okay. And leave the rest because you don't know what's going to happen. Like we try not to leave it empty. That wouldn't make sense. But at the same time, we don't want to take too much out each quarter. So we try to make it pretty even so that we're not uh, paying too much like GST and stuff. Cause we don't, obviously we don't pay taxes. It's, it's a lump sum. We pay taxes at the end. Okay. So if you, so if you're paying yourself 25,000 a year, so let's say, and you pay no taxes, it's a lot of money to pay tax. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we try to do, and we do cash jobs. I'm sure everybody does cash jobs. Hopefully the CRA is not listening, but we do cash jobs and we don't uh, say much about it. And then we just we do 50, 50, like. Interesting. So it is just an even cut. So, but yeah. you, you mentioned too, that it is kind of seasonal. So like, if you are going crazy for like graduation season, you just have to kind of put your pride aside and not think like, well, I made all the money this month. Like this yeah. sucks. Because then there will be a time like Christmas where you said her sales. Totally. Yeah. So like at the, she has to work day and night to make those ornaments and stuff. It's literally a lot of work. Like you have yeah. to watch this machine work. Um, then you have to scrape it. Like there's a lot of work that goes into it that I don't actually do. So um, no, I don't, I don't care if I'm in the garage doing what I actually really love and we're still making money at these markets that we have. Um, I don't care. Oh yeah. I want to talk about that too, because that's another revenue source that you do these like pop-up. I don't want to call them craft fairs. Cause you have like, a yeah, whole, I mean, you have like a whole setup. It's so cute. You have, yeah. are you still using your camper, your trailer? Yeah, only in the, only in the summer. We've realized that so if it gets cute. too cold, it's not fun. Um, so yeah, those, are you selling mostly this type of stuff that Mel makes? Yeah. So it's mostly stuff that Mel makes. And then we do a, like a, a relatively big display on the trailer um, and then the hope is that people see that name recognition, call us. Yeah. Um, and we always do like giveaways and stuff while we're there and stuff like that, just to get the people excited. Cause there's, there's hundreds of people that go through these markets. Like 
because they're all makers. And it, the way it works here is that you have to apply for these markets. Okay. And they will, they'll pick and choose who they like based on what you make. You can't sell anything that's, most of them, you can't sell anything that's like bought. You okay. have to actually make it. And it's not like a bazaar, like when you were a kid and you went to the church and like you bought like weird stuff from like grandmas and stuff. <laughs> like it's like super cool stuff. Like yeah. it's, it's unbelievable what, what people make. Like I'll walk around these markets and be like, blown away yeah. at what people's minds can come up with and I think even that alone is is a value to me because I I think you learn more by seeing what other people create it gives you inspiration and then sometimes you can bring that back to your own business without obviously copying but getting inspired by something that's great and making it your own well and um, that's just I think you just touched on something too that could also be a marketing idea for everyone listening. Even if you are not going to do the fair yourself, you could partner with a local artist who's going to be at one of these things. They pay the booth fee. They're going to work the the hours and maybe you just volunteer to like decorate their booth with a huge installation and make it look super awesome and then leave your cards there. Like that's great advertising as well. A lot of them, because they're, they're run by other small businesses they'll let you do balloon displays in exchange for a booth. Hmm. So yeah. like you can win that way too. So you've already done the balloon display, which really is benefiting you. And you get a booth where people have the opportunity to come up to you and say, and I always sell like for balloon stuff. I sell like balloon, I call them balloon wands, which oh. is really just a foil balloon on like the balloon um, stick. Oh, cute. And then, and then I add ribbon to it. So they make it look fancy. So it's not like just from Walmart. How much do you sell those for? I sell them for $6. Okay, cool. Yeah. So like, what is it? It's probably like 50 cents for the stick and cup and then a dollar for the foil and then my time, which is. Yeah. But at least it, it gives you a reason to stand there. That's what I've oh. been hit up for vendor fairs before, but I'm like, I don't sell. Yeah. Don't you can sell totally anything. Sell balloon wands, especially if it's a kid's event. Cause then those kids want those balloons so bad, which yeah. is mean. And then they walk around with them and then other kids see them. Oh man, it's so amazing that people are like, where's those balloons? Like, has anybody seen <laughs> balloon? Like they're just so annoyed. And then they're like, six dollars. <laughs> and then we buy it anyways. Because they know their kid's gonna be sad. So we just got back from Disney World and I spent like thirty dollars <laughs> on a Mickey Mouse shaped popcorn holder for my daughter. Yeah. I was like, well, we gotta get it. I mean, there's no other choice. <laughs> You do. You do it for your kids because you love your kids and you don't want them to be sad and you don't want them to ruin your time where you are. Yeah, exactly. Right. Keep them happy. One small thing. But I think all that together just makes it like a, like our experience, Mel and I together is, is fun. It's exciting. I know that eventually it's going to grow into something where she can be a full-time worker, the two of us. Um, but like I don't mind that she has a part-time job because my goal and like I say this, it, like I don't really say it too often, but it is to teach. I really love doing instructing um, is design. I love doing that too. Um, so I, I might be away more than I think. Like if I could be like Melissa Ray Vincent or like, you know, like all of a sudden they just get asked to go like, would you like to come to Italy? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, please. I think for me, like, it's just, you have to, in the balloon industry, to be an instructor, you really have to work the room. Um, and you have to figure out who, who's doing stuff. And then you have to offer your services. And um, Mel knows that she hates it. She doesn't want to be instructor. Like she comes on some of the like online stuff with me and she hates every minute of it. And then I laugh at her and it's great. Yeah. Um, but because she she has an accent, she doesn't really love talking. Oh, sure. On, so she always feels like she's going to say something silly. Um, and then I would laugh at her. It would be great. <laughs> but I love it. I love doing it. Like, I am a, a true introvert. Like, if I had the opportunity to stay home and be on the couch, like, yeah, let's do that. And watch some, like, TV shows. But I also, like, not that I'm faking it, but I love – being the person that gets to stand on the stage and like give tips and like show new things. 
And then I kind of go back to my little corner of the world where like I'm comfortable. Yeah, totally. No, I think that's an awesome goal. And I think that's awesome. You're honest about it. Um, and we actually, I don't want you to commit to this, but I think we should do another episode after the big balloon build because Jenny has basically designed Half. half. She's designed half. half of it. And and by design, not like how I design where I like draw a crappy sketch on a piece of paper and it's in my head. She has like been, I mean, what hours a week? Like she has been working full time on this build basically. Yeah, it's like and, uh, concept to creation is what I say it is. All the way down. You're onto like the recipes now, aren't you? Yeah. We're onto production sheets now. I mean, like that's a skill I don't have at all. So I just think that's incredible. If you'd want to come on and, and just chat. Yeah, about I, think learning a, I think after your build, we'll, there'll be lots to chat about because the it's, it's going to be wild. Yeah. There's so much going on in your build and uh, it's going to be mind blowing in a good way. And hosting uh, one of these things, hosting the big balloon build has been a lot of work, probably more than I anticipated. So not having to be involved in the design at all has been I think if I had to be in all those meetings, I would have died. Like I, like I just, there wasn't enough time in the day. So being able to kind of hand that over to you and Stuart and I'm curious, like it's, it's such a relief and it's very exciting because I get to see it for the first time too. Like I haven't been thinking about what it's going to look like. It like really is a surprise for me. Yeah. And I think that's scary though, as the host that you're, that you don't know, but you know, My hope is that after every build, if I have the opportunity to go to other builds, that the host of that build will feel the confidence in the design team that they know that it's going to be like a superior product. Yeah. Um, It's mind blowing, truly mind blowing, um, in my opinion, of how it starts to finish. Like, because I've obviously gone, this will be my, I don't know, it's my third or fourth build. Um, And I usually just show up. Yeah. Hi guys, like, what are we building? <laughs> Which is is great too, but um, it's very interesting to see the work that goes behind it, and I I very much applaud Stuart for doing it himself for so long. I can't imagine and all the other stuff. Like, there's no way. <laughs> I actually don't know how he does it or sleep. Yeah, um, I know. Well, I'm so excited. We, I just started seeing plans, and I can't wait to see the final thing come together. It's in like. It's in a month. It's in a month and a half. It's so soon. Yeah, a month and a half. Um, but so we will get together after that and just yeah, that'd be awesome. The whole process because I think I think your design concepts are so good, but then also getting to that execution point is where I'm curious to hear how you get there. I'm yeah, really, there. I'm really excited to see the finished product of something that I came up with. Yeah, I am and too. that I'm not actually building. Yeah, I know. Isn't that weird too? That you get yeah. to like, you get to dream on this scale and not have to limit it to what you can do yourself. Yeah, it's uh, it's phenomenal. Like uh, at the end of the day, that's what, that's what balloons is, right? It's yeah. this insane world that we get to create and live in and spend time with our friends and meet people from all over the world. It's just this wild. I don't know. I'm I'm very grateful for being a part of this this type of place and and that's a very sincere um if people people who know me and who are listening they'll be like oh jenny like no. <laughs> because so, <laughs> but i am very sincere when i say like i just appreciate all of the opportunities that have come so far like it's been a wild world because you always think that you're little man on the totem pole it doesn't matter who you are or whether you have one hundred and fifty thousand followers i think of lily um when I met her the first time at float and I was like, yes, I'm like, I'm so excited to meet you. She was so humble. And like, I know you kind of have your like rock star yeah. in your head and you're like, that person's so talented. And then you get to meet them and you're like, Oh, they're just like normal. They're just like yeah. a regular person. I know. Like Tommy, the first time I met Tommy, he was just like, so like kind and humble. And we had a good chat. And I remember leaving, like, I think we went to like some after party or something. And I left and I was like, I can't believe I just had like a 40 minute conversation with Tommy. Like, like I thought that I would never be able to do that. It's just such a funny world. I know. And, I get it. and you see newbies do it and they're like, can you introduce me to Tommy? And I'm like, Oh, I've been there. Yes, I can. <laughs> like it's just, it's so humbling and, and it's so exciting and you don't have to have hundreds of thousands of followers. You can have a thousand followers and be just as big in this industry as the next person. Yeah. I think that's totally what I love. Agree. 
Oh man. Well, let's end on that. Um, right, this has been so fun. I feel like we have so much more to talk about, but I thought that was really interesting hearing about your partnership. And, um, also I just love the vibe of like setting up your business the way you want it to work for you. That is what I'm all about. So I love yeah. hearing that, that you are as well. Thanks, bud. All right. Well, we'll see you at the end of March. I can't wait. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for listening. As usual, I tried to keep it bright and light. If you are interested in bonus episodes, check out our Patreon group where I release an additional episode every single week and you unlock more than 50 archived episodes as soon as you join. Check out the link in the show notes wherever you're listening.